Hi, I'm Jeff Davis. I'm the Western Regional Sales Manager for Surumi Pump, and I'm here today to talk to you about well dewatering. What is it? How does it work? And what kind of pumps are used, and how do you choose the right one? So, temporary well dewatering is a technique used to temporarily lower the water table level so that you can do work below that. So if you need to install pipelines, let's say, for sewer and water, or building foundations or footings, or even if you're working in an underground mine that needs the water lowered uh, constantly to keep the miners dry at that depth, or tie-ins to existing sewer and water, these are the kinds of jobs that well dewatering does a nice job on. This is the kind of thing that you would use this for. So when planning a well dewatering operation, you basically move through three different stages. The first is the information gathering stage. You're gathering information about the water table, where is it, how low do we need to bring that water table down to do our job, what kind of soil are we talking about, coarse, fine, sand, rock, clay, peat, a good test drill, and some maybe historical information about other dewatering jobs that have been done will help you gather enough information to make those decisions. So you're going to use wells, you've moved into the planning stage, how many wells do I need? How far are they going to be spaced? How long are they going to be or how deep are we going? And based on our soil samples, what size slots? How much of that well is going to be slotted and is it going to be coarse or fine slots? Also, we're also looking at the power supply here now. Electric submersible pumps, slimline design, that's what we're looking for usually in the well job, but we're going to have to have power, so we need a line drop or we need generators on site. Where are we going to discharge and how far away? That's important. You need permits to discharge water, groundwater or any kind of water because of a couple of different reasons. You can either contaminate water in the area of your discharge. You could also cause serious soil erosion, some unsightly things and, and problems on other people's properties. So you have to be very careful with the discharge. You need permits for that. You know, how much noise are we going to make? Do we need sound attenuated generators to keep, keep the noise down? Are we in the middle of a neighborhood doing a tie-in? That kind of thing. So those are all important aspects of planning the job. Now we get on to the execution part. Here's where we're choosing the specific pumps. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the wells in the ground first. We're going to jet or drill the wells in, so we're lowering the wells into the ground, getting them into position. Then we're going to lower the chosen pump into the well. So we're dropping that pump all the way down to the bottom of the well, typically or within a couple of feet of the bottom of the well and then we're going to attach the power supply through our control panels. We talked about auto control panels to keep that water level at the right level without letting our pumps run dry. So we've got those installed. We're going to run that the duration of the job and keep our water in the right place. When we're finished with the job, we're going to basically take this all out in reverse. We're shutting off the power, removing the control panels, we're going to pull the pumps out of the wells and then eventually take the wells out as well and the water table should come back to the normal level that it was before the job and then we're going to finish our construction and fill back in our subcut and everything is finished. So when choosing the correct pump for your operation, obviously you want to consider the performance of the pump. You need to know, you know how much water do I need to move per well? Uh, what's the horsepower going to be of that pump? What kind of hydraulics is it going to have? The type of impeller? What kind of pressure do I need to get my discharge to where it needs to go? So you're considering all of the performance of that pump. Uh, also, of course, since you're in a well casing, a slimline pump with a slimmer design uh, is, is preferable. So you're going to want to choose a pump that will fit in your casing. You have a size diameter uh, that you need to fit and so you need at least a quarter inch or more on each, all the way around that pump in order to maneuver it. So the right size pump, the right type hydraulic performance pump, and now also too the materials of construction are important. If you're going to allow any abrasives to get into the pump, and you will, some abrasives will get through, and there will be some things that that pump's going to have to handle because it's on a construction site or a mine site. So typically, an abrasion resistant metal like a high chrome alloy impeller 
high chrome alloy wear plates, heavy duty outer casings and motor housings that basically can withstand that kind of abrasion. Uh, there may be also be a corrosive nature to the water. Uh, we don't know what the pH necessarily would be without testing, but if we found that there was a low pH or a high pH, then maybe we're looking at a corrosion resistant type of metal for our outer casing and motor housings and maybe even our impellers in order to survive the duration of the job. Once we get the right pump in the hole, um, we actually have control panels that will keep that pump operating either all the time or shut it off when it's not necessary. We want to conserve uh, energy where we can and we also want to keep our pumps from running dry. We don't want them overheating. So a good auto panel is also necessary at this point. So during this well dewatering project, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, so choosing the right pump and operating properly throughout the duration of the job is very important. So one of the things that, that we run into is power issues. Uh, you're at a remote location, so if you're running on generator power and you don't have a line drop, you know that power could fluctuate from the generator or you could have issues that might cause your pump to overheat because you're running on low voltage. Also, even line drops from the power company are not 100% uh, foolproof. So a lot of times you'll get a power drop through the line from the power company as well, and that can cause your pumps to run a little bit warm. So you always want steady power. Um, one of the other things that we look at is the abrasive nature or corrosive nature of the water. We mentioned that um, earlier that the slot sizes in your wells need to be proper to keep as many abrasives out. You need to do a good sampling of the water when you do your information gathering to make sure that if you have low pH or high pH, you might need stainless steel pumps or some kind of coating on your pumps. You don't want your pumps running dry. That's another issue that happens. Uh, we, we, we did mention control panels and level control, auto control panels. It's very important that your pumps don't run dry for an extended period of time. Even if their seals can handle that, it's not good for the motor to run uncooled for an extended period of time. And if there are abrasives present uh, in the well, running without water can actually increase the likelihood uh, of a lot of damage from abrasives. So you don't want your pumps running dry. Um, cable damage is one of the things that happens quite often. The power cable gets damaged from the installation and or somebody tries to pull the pump from the well with the power cord. So a good strain relief on the power cord can help, but we strongly suggest that you use a rope or cable to lift that pump in and out of the well. Uh, proper uh, lifting and also having the right pump that has proper cable sealing. Uh, some sort of an anti-wicking system that might keep water from getting into the top of the pump. So Surumi pumps uh, are typically uh, very well made for this type of application. We have slimline pumps. Uh, our distributors are standing by to help you. Our own inside sales people and our inside application engineers are standing by. And please uh, call us and contact us if you need any help at all deciding on which pump is proper for the well dewatering job and follow us on social media for additional tech tips and application information ongoing. Thanks for watching.